picture is an exaggerated portion of an individual's future that I most likely expound on and uh, try to make fun of, yeah? You've probably seen him at Micronesian Fair, or perhaps at the Chamorro Village Wednesday Night Market, or even at the Guam Premier Outlet. For caricature artist Mark Chalahi, they're all opportunities to perfect his craft. I caught up with them to find out how long he's been sketching up a storm at GPO. They cater, you know, they, they give that uh, benefit, I guess, if you will, to the local artists who come and display. So it all started out with uh, after the Liberation Day, one of the local artists had approached the management and asked them if they could possibly come over and you know display some of their tomorrow artwork. So what I'm doing here is basically just doing caricature just for the hell of it because nobody else was doing it, you know, and I'm doing it in memory also of my good friend Greg Flores. Chamahi was devastated by the passing of Flores, who says was not only a very dear friend, but also an excellent artist who he learned a lot from. He was one of my idols because, you know, he always carried on the tradition and then the forces who were with the uh, staff when I was when I was back in Saipan, I was selling my stickers and Greg was doing his caricatures. The Micronesian Fair, Greg would be doing caricatures, I would go visit him, and sometimes I would sit down and help him do some caricatures, you know, just for fun, giving the profits, and then Taha would call us up. If there's a first lady's uh, get together or something like that, a tree lighting ceremony, they would call us up and bring us out, and we would uh, do caricatures for, for that cause. So just how exactly did Trulahi stumble upon the art of caricature? My first caricature I ever got done was done by Ron Castro. That was, I believe I was only 15 years old at the time, and that's when I was really surprised to see how the features he captured in me was astonishing. And, you know, as a teenager, I asked him, how did you learn this? You know, everybody asked me, how long have you been doing this? How, how did you get into it. So I would tell them the same thing. Ron Castro did a portrait of me, or caricature. And uh, I just kept on looking at it. He would eventually join the military. And on one particular day called Army Day, he went over to the commissary to buy some chichalon, Tabasco, and beer to hang out with some of the guys. Taking Ron Castro's advice, he broke out his markers and started sketching caricatures of those around him. I bought a rim of Xerox paper and Back in the days, it was called uh, rubber-dub markers, laundry markers, and that's when I started. So I just started drawing people for the hell of it, and it turned out to be a hit, because I'd be sitting down drinking beer, and I know I bought a six-pack, but where did the other six-pack come from? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it was so fun, because people would just come, and they would actually come and tip, you know, and put money in, or go buy some more paper, because I'd run out of paper. 500 sheets to tell you how many mistakes I started out with. Tarahi continued to perfect his sketching, practicing whenever he could. These caricatures are really um, a keepsake because I've been keeping a lot of my caricatures. I had this one incident when I was going through an NCO Academy back in Oregon. We went down to uh, the seaside and they had this caricaturist on the side of the boardwalk doing caricatures. Uh, me wanting to practice again. I went out and bought markers and he didn't know I was drawing his customers behind him. And the customers would throw his pictures away. I keep mine. I'm not bragging or anything, but it's the honest and goodness truth. He says that each caricaturist has their own style, his being more detailed. How did anyone approach you about, you know, asking you to kind of them to I've, be like a, apprentice type of thing. I've given them tips and I've show, I've showed them how to do it and I've given them paper. I've gone to schools uh, by invitation of the uh, art teachers and I've given instructions to the class. I've showed them how to do it and I told them that it's a fun hobby to pick up. You know, it's out there. It's it's a, it's, a, it's an open market for them. He mentioned much of his artistic inspiration comes from his brother Paul, and his artwork is an extension of his talent. Trilahi, quite the busy man, also noted that doing his caricature pieces is therapeutic. It's a good therapy for me. I'm doing this because it's keeping my sanity. Even if 
they discuss people and what I draw on them. But it's all fun, you know. And then the, the biggest uh, factor I get out of this is just seeing their faces light up and laugh. It's um, very interesting to see how many people come over. On any given day that Tulahi is at GPO, he could sketch as many as 20 people. A lot of people have special requests, but what I do is I basically tell them that the only reason why I'm doing this is because I'm per uh, perpetuating our culture and our heritage. Um, you'll see as soon as I'm done with your caricature that I put you somewhat in a semi uh, Chamarita outfit. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I try to incorporate a lot of our heritage and history. He says this is very important to him because a majority of his customers are from Japan and the mainland and they take the picture back with them. So when they take it back with them, you have a laddie stone. People don't know what a laddie stone is, you know, so I kind of brief them up on what a laddie stone is and they would tell their story when they get back home. The um, Russian lady that I had done, she was really, really uh, flabbergasted by the way I'd done hers. And I told her the Serena story because she wanted to be a mermaid. And I did her as a mermaid. If you would like to get your very own caricature, you can find Turlahi either at GPO near the Ross entrance or find him on Facebook. You like that, dear? <laughs>